Just making sure we're up here. As he drops the speaker. No, the speaker's good. I just got to now find the notes because my <laughs> iPad is dead. Welcome to Everyone Racers, a show designed for the world of low dollar racing and oddball RV culture. It doesn't matter what kind of Lemma Champ or Lucky Track Dog League you run, SCC or NASA, we won't discriminate as long as you drive it hard and built it yourself. Join us each week for tech discussion, tips, tricks, news and notes in the world of amateur endurance racing, whether it's on the spot, hella sweet, we're lucky enough and Chrissy gives us just the tip. We're sure you'll giggle a little and learn even less. Everyone report to the paddock. This is Chris. This is Chrissy. I'm Jeff. And I'm Mental. And we are Everyone Racers. Thanks for coming back to another uh, Alpha Romeo episode of our podcast. It is 155. Can we believe it? We've made it this far. And it's still taken us how long to actually get the show started. You have no idea. Uh, a while. So, uh, if you're not driving, get your bingo card out because if you uh, have barking dogs on your card, you already have yes, a square. I know. Not it's a little terrible. Oh, it's not, not yours. Not oh, mine. I was so looking at you. Wow. I was like, oh. Yep, they're going a little crazy up there. Here's, here's my dogs. Here's my dogs right here. <laughs> oh, they're the cutest. Uh, I'm mad because I can't see them. <laughs> Okay, okay, sorry. They're just all right, they're all so sleeping. Make sure you get your bingo card out because barking dogs is a thing. Um, let's kick it off. What you're working on? Um, I let's start with Jeff. You it seems like you have a whole lot of going on here. I wouldn't say a whole lot. I had a whole lot of work going on this weekend. Uh, Labor Day weekend was this past weekend, and I had to work a couple of days because still freshman orientation. Um, but uh, uh, I did get out and get some work on some cars. So, uh, yeah, I put the Miata back into street trim so I could take it back to my father's house and thin the herd a little bit in my front yard. So that's always like a good thing. It looked you're... really cool in the picture. Like it was lifted, which I think yeah, you it should was do. Flying. No, I think you should just like, you should just lift it. That would be awesome. That, the gambler would be a Safari nice thing Miata, to do. Yeah. Safari Miata is a thing. I know. Yeah, it looks, I would looks Safari good. A Miata in any second. Um, the cool part about it was is because the, the suspension was so stiff that it didn't droop. You know, like the wheels just kind of like <clears throat> stayed there. But anyway, uh, yeah, so uh, I did a race seat ectomy and I um, cut out all the metal when I pulled the race, put the race seat in. So I had to like remanufacture mounts, uh, drill holes, basically. Uh, and and uh, so the, so the um, stock seat could go back in because my father in his 70s is not going to sit in a kirky like this and drive so uh, um yes yeah, put the street tires on I, I i had a lot of tin work that i did and, and the hasty job of painting was starting to rust already so i i did some wire wheel and and re-rusted and chrissy you're going to be very excited by this i took off clean the piece of trim that is on the edge of the window where you put your yes. arm. Yeah, because it's and I, rusty and, I, and it's going to give you tetanus. Uh, yes, it was really the plastic coating that was stabbing you. Uh, yeah. It was rusty. I'm not saying it wasn't rusty. Oh, I so know. I, it was I, rusty. I've been there. I, I wire wheeled it and I painted it black. Oh, nice that's black nice. Black, so. Oh, that's that's really uh, considerate of you. Exactly. Um, since we had a flat steel floor now, I put on skateboard tape, like the grippy yeah. tape. D yep. Grip that was fantastic. Like, that's what we, we have on the pedals of our car. Yeah, that's that's no. where I got the idea from, and I I, I put on the the clutch pedal because the pl clutch pedal had lost a little rubber thing. So, uh, but I put the floor mats back, and they like don't move because they're on like the grip tape. So yeah, it was great, except for all the interruptions from work because you know no one will let me have a day alone. So, uh, so there were some electric gremlins. I couldn't get the air horns to work, so I was like, eh. Who needs the air horns? I'll just bring it back. So I bring it back to my dad's house and I have to move it over by the RV in the yard. And Jim looks over and he says, you know, you ain't got no taillights, right? <laughs> what, so, was it during the day? No. Well, I brought it over during the day, but then it was at night when I was moving it from one side to the other because we had Labor Day barbecue. And uh, yeah, there's no taillights. So it's got to come back here and I got to chase the electric gremlins because that's, it's good, like, that's the one we had it but we've had that t that gremlin before yeah at new jersey last or a couple of years ago the air horns weren't working and you're like oh what? my horns aren't working and then we said yeah there's no lights either so yeah 
but I had I think it was, fixed it. Yeah, it was something like something weird, like a bulb. Yeah, like it didn't ground out right, and that. Yeah, it's all rust. Bad. It's rust holding hands, I believe. Yeah. Oh, we know that. So uh-huh. you know, every ground <laughs> needs to be clean. Yeah. So, well, anyway, yeah. Uh, mental, you're like in an RV right now. What the heck is going on with yes. you? What you working on? Uh, we had a bit of a family issue, so I am on my way to Nebraska right now uh, before uh, I head to High Plains later this week. Cool. You're by yourself with the dogs, though? I am. I'm by myself with the dogs. Uh, I've actually been working on stuff. I uh, ordered, I got uh, my clip-in pedals, my bicycle, and trying to figure those out. And then I did uh, all the pool work, got that up to speed and ordered the head gasket for the Volvo. So, yes, I've, I've been working on cars. And actually, mostly I've been making travel arrangements, not just for this weekend, which we'll talk about, but also uh, Corey talked me into doing the Gingerman race in October with him. Wow, traveling, racing fool. Yep, just a pimp. Very excited. Working Chrissy, job. what yes. have you been working on other My than tan. putting up awesome videos on our YouTube site? My tan. Whoa, wait, wait. And, 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 and while you're while you're on that, because Chrissy, right there, Chrissy's wearing I'll put a, it right Chrissy's, there. Yeah, Chrissy's wearing a summer top. I am. I, on the other hand, drove through a snowstorm today, and I am in Nebraska where it is 41 degrees when the humidity feels like 34. Awesome. The world has gone insane. Well, I mean, and I uh, the Colorado had had the same thing, but they were in the same place. It's not even just that we're in two different places and that's the, the weather. Like, you know, Colorado had was hundred yesterday and snow today, which is crazy yeah. too. Insane. Yep. Oh, okay. So uh, I was working on my tan. So last week we were packing and planning, uh, trying to get ready for an upcoming race. And then I still have a little bit more prep to do for that. Um, but other than that, I was, uh, you know, we were at the, at the Cape. We spent a lot of time on the boat. I uh, had a, a windy day, but other than that, beautiful weather. Couldn't, couldn't complain. Uh, it took us longer to get home today. Uh, it took us about an hour and a half longer than we planned. And it wasn't even rush hour traffic. It was just, uh, one of them was an accident on the tap, which was always exciting. Uh, actually, I, I don't care. It's the tap. That's what it's going to be. Um, Momo. Uh, whatever. It's if it's you know tap. what, yeah. yeah I know. I uh, That's the tap and Z bridge outside of for- New York city for yeah. all of those non East coast people. Sure. Uh, it's a big bridge and it's nice and new now. And no one really cares about that. We were in a traffic jam. So, oh, well, here we are. Chris, what are you working on? My tan. Uh, no, also I picked up, uh, I packed up the trailer so Hamza could take it because he picked that up with his Tacoma so that he could, and he's going to not drive the enclosed trailer now with his Tacoma. That would be sad, a sad, sad trip, but, um, he's going to, he's going to rent a diesel pickup truck and, just have no cares given and tow that down. So, but anyway, got it ready for him. Um, went to the Cape this weekend, took the boat out. Bo, so the boat's here in our driveway. Did everybody, everybody make fun of you because your boat's ugly? The paint job's terrible? Uh huh, totally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All the way here. Oh, everybody yeah. was like point and laugh. No, it's really, yeah. it doesn't look that bad. That boat's not shiny enough in some and places. E- and even most people that would look at it would say it was fine. Yeah. You know, I, I painted a corner of my room when I moved into this house, our bedroom. Uh, I had to redo the roof, the ceiling. And I only had like whatever ceiling paint was left over. So there's one corner that is in like flat white and the rest is in ceiling paint. And I stare at that thing all the time going, that's terrible. So I feel not, a, not enough to do anything about it. Mike. No, no not even. No, no. I mean, you're six corner, years. That, that, Flat, that flat corner, that ceiling bothered him so bad he ripped up the floors in his house. That's right. And and taking and a long roof. time to put it back. That's yeah. right. <laughs> and electrocuted his son. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's, let's move on here. Yep. News and notes. I actually have some news and notes I did not have a chance to type in. And I apologize, Chris, I cut you off. So Porsche, we, we, we do occasionally get news releases in our E1R or in everyoneracersgmail.com, and Porsche has now introduced a new version of the Cayenne, the Cayenne Coupe. I was very excited. So I went to Porsche's website, and you can go to Porsche's website and look at the Cayenne models. Now, when I say coupe, 
Anyone, any one of you guys. How many doors does the coop have? Dos. Correct. Want to guess how many doors the Cayenne coop has? Five. Three. Five, exactly. Five. It, it's just it's just a slightly more of a hatchback version because apparently a Porsche, words mean nothing. Turbo, electric car? Of course. Yes. Non-turbo and our turbocharged introductory four-cylinder model? Of course. Coop? Of course it means five doors. Get it together, yeah. Porsche. Well, yeah, the, your daily driver was the first four door coupe thing, and they even called it that. So, yeah, it's why it's, yeah, yeah. Didn't, didn't they like the Impala in like 1960 something call itself a coupe because it was a pillarless four door? Sure. I think so. Yeah. I don't think, I'm just saying, I don't think, I, the, I, never, I, I don't, I don't I think the 2000 and coupes, whatever. I heard them called hardtop convertibles, which makes me think of the old folding Ford Fairlines. Yeah. Because I remember I had a I had a two door no post Oldsmobile, sixty six. I, I just think those words have meant nothing for a very long time. Yeah. Probably. Also, like well, like two door sedan. Exactly. It's, if it has enough room in the back, it was technically a sedan, even though it only had anyway whatever. Let's move on from that t- terrible semantic argument. Um, the, the New York Times recently featured an article highlighting Lemons Racing, along with great interviews about electric cars, including the dangling $50,000 prize Jay has put up for the first electric car to win overall. Uh, the most important feature of this article was a lead photo. It was the caddy of Half Dan and Lemon Terry, and said, a great way for Eric Rude to get a photo credit in the New York Times. Whoa! So, right, good for him. Finally, some yep. real journalism out of the Times. Yep, good. So Metzl, it's going to be interesting to see how this goes once you start driving. Because when we did this, it didn't work so hot, so well. Like, um, yeah, we hang he's up got... on if we need to. Yeah. <laughs> Nebraska, it's flat. How bad yeah. can it be? The RV is not loud at all. Don't worry. But, but y'all were yelling at the <laughs> at the dashboard, right? At least he's got AirPods in. Yeah, that's true. That's what I was I was about to say. By the way, Chrissy, I am so impressed with what your video sounds like with your new little AirPods yeah, aren't, thingy. Don't you love them? Seriously. Yes. That, that, I, I, I was like, why is that audio? And I remember you told us, I was like, man, that audio is awesome. Oh, except for the end when it starts clipping for, yeah, you know, well. you every other word. Yeah, I know. Anyway, okay. uh, in other Porsche news, because what else are we going to talk about? It's either a Tesla or a Porsche. Uh, some 16 year old girl, sorry, didn't write down her name. Uh, Chloe. Chloe. Yes. Thank you. Uh, just broke the world Guinness record slalom i didn't know there was a slalom record in a new porsche 718 uh it was 2500 feet with 50 cones you cannot disturb a single cone and she did it in a blistering pace uh she is a kart racer so she does i do not believe that she has a chloe chambers thank you sorry i had to go look it up uh so she she did it in Completed the half mile run in forty seven point four five seconds. Do you see the video? I did see the video. The video is excellent. Yeah, I, I like the one that has four the four different views. Yeah, I don't know if that's the only one that's there, but that was awesome. Yeah, and she's kind of yeah. cool. She's like a little tiny thing. Like uh-huh. her head doesn't even like it doesn't even like get to the top of the seat. Nope. <laughs> no, so, that's pretty awesome. Just like every other kart racer, it's best if you weigh like nothing, right? And you're 16 and a girl, which is awesome. Uh, I I did want to say that I I mentioned on the Facebook when I posted it that I have a way to improve and break this record again. I'm going to buy the same car. I'm going to get the same girl. I'm going to set it up in the exact same place. And I'm going to lock the seatbelt. She was flopping inside the seat. Oh, yeah. a, A lot. Oh, and, and that I was most like, of the comments too. Yeah, I was like, the, you know, like the the amount of car control that she has is amazing, right? But she's doing it while her torso is flopping back like four inches back and forth. Yeah, I so, saw the same. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, get her a better seat, everybody. Right, she can afford that now. Right. <laughs> okay. Up. Oh, come. Oh, that's all the notes. News and notes we got. 
Uh, upcoming races. Okay, so uh, there's so much racing going on this weekend. We have lots to talk about. Uh, AER is running at some point. I uh, fit, I am on their site, and Mental said that the entrance list is there somewhere, and I cannot find it. So there are some cars that are going to go around at some point for uh, two eight-hour events. Look at the actual event under schedule, and it'll I'm, have I'm, nobody cares. I'm there. If they want to see it. They'll let them I'm going to give you it. here. I'm just going to make it up. They're going to be 47 cars. 29 <laughs> of them are going to be BMWs. Boring. Five of them are going to be Miatas. Oh, and- Only five? That. Come on. I'm thinking like nine Miatas. Okay, yeah. nine Miatas, one Honda, four Porsches, and one, like, I don't know. Volkswagen. It's Krabby Crowd could be there in the Volkswagen, maybe. Yeah. Yes. That's true. Anyway. Anyway. There, that, that's, my, that's my estimate. Let's see how far off I am. <laughs> anyway. Uh, Champ Cars headed to Indy. For the Tyrac.com, Indy Double Ten, 64 cars. Oh, yep. I'm, I'm on the... I'm probably on. the same similar kind of ratio. I'm going to say, um, again, 29 BMWs because AER's BMW quotient is higher. So. Listeners, Chris is Midwest. pulling his numbers out of his butt. You yeah. do not have to text it's... us. You do not <laughs> He's have wrong. to put in, in the comments. Yeah. But it's the Midwest. There might be a lot more Camaros and Mustangs. Probably. There's a bunch of there are sure. bunch of Corvettes. I'm on the list. I just didn't get a chance to put it into the thing. Uh, there are lots of there's some Corvettes. There's a couple of Mustangs. Uh, as far as I can see, nothing interesting. Okay. A couple of Lexuses. Right. So there's a uh, J- James Bondo TR7. That'll be there. Oh, that's good. Um, that's a shame. Yeah, <laughs> Bazinga will be there. A couple couple teams we recognize from there. So Bazinga's gonna Bazinga's gonna be there. I yeah, towing out to Indy. That's a All good right. trip. That's a long trip. Yes, yeah. that's, that's what I see. Yep. They're from Jersey, you know. Yeah. But you get to run at Indy. I mean, come on. I would, a, I would do it. There is a. I totally would do it. There's a lot of Lexuses, surprisingly so. An Altima. Yeah. Well, the SC300 was is was kind of like a the ringer car for Champ for a year or two. Like it fit in the points thing just right, and oh, blah blah blah. Ton of Miatas. And that, Big gas that tank. Altima, that Altima has won one overall before of a Champ car. Really. Ooh. Yeah, impressive. Because we talked about oh. it, we're like, "How the heck does an Ultima win?" That's right. I remember that was for sale. I think they were asking like forty grand for it, or what? something, some <laughs> number that was preposterous, like so preposterous that it, uh, you get like, you got to be kidding me. You got to be kidding me. Anyway, but it's one trip, right? Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> there's so much racing going on. We don't have time to talk about all this. Nope. There are two. Count them two. Simultaneous, true. 24-hour races being sponsored by the 24 Hours of Le Mans. We thought that number was a joke. No, it's not a joke, people. They're doing actual overnighters here. Uh, to the best of any research, we can confirm that this is the first time any race series has done two true 24s at the same time. Uh, let's start they're, running first- two, they're running two simultaneous 12 hours at the same time. So Lemons is really running four races this weekend. Let's not get excited about the 12 hours. They're basically giving out a trophy for a halfway. It's not exactly a separate event. Uh, so let's talk about the first one. You the 12 hours. I'll do it. <laughs> so let's talk about the first one. 24 hours at Carolina Motorsports. Go. Who's got this? I think we've got 93 cars, nine BMWs. That's the fine That's ratio. less than 10%. And it's clear, and we're we're bringing one of them. So. <laughs> and, and, and that BMW is going to be on pole. Sorry. No, no, there's no sorry. That's great. There's also eleven <laughs> hottest, three Porsches. There's a. This is the fun stuff. There's a Tercel. There's a Kia Sophia. There's that Sophia wonderful. Sophia or Sephia? Sophia. I think. Mm, I think it's Sephia. All right. Okay, keep going. Put, put in the uh, comments whether you think it's Sophia yeah, or Sophia. Yeah. Thank you. Did, and honestly, seen the, we don't care. Seen the Thompson wrap up video? I Not yet. Yes. No, hadn't seen it. And it's a Kia. We don't care what it's called. It's a Kia piece of crap. Uh, it, there's a uh, talent for you, Jeff. That'll break yeah. quickly. There's a Lincoln Mark <laughs> 8, which is, which is, I've seen that before. They've got like 315 width tires all around in that damn thing. It's, it's so fast until it blows it up. And so it is so fast. Down. It needs gas every like hour, but uh, and it it's needs fast tires and every two hours. Right. Um, yeah. So there we go. 
Oh, I like that you because I like that your BMW that you put BMW. Sorry, exclamation point. Mm-hmm. They wrote that in the in the <laughs> entrance list. <laughs> yeah, I got that because that's how I listed it. I said E36, comma sorry. Sorry. Cause, <laughs> cause I'm, I, and actually, because I I did all, all of these, uh, I was looking through it and I was like, oh, that's really funny. And then I was like, oh wait, wait that's our car. That. Oh wait, that's that you a, did that. Oh uh, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, our, our, since Mitchell's driving, I'll read his part. Uh, Lemons is also running the Get Your Fill 1224 hour event at High Plains in Deer Trail, Colorado. 57 cars, 8 BMWs. Boring. Boring. Uh, 6 Miatas, 4 Hondas, a Porsches. One Porsches. One Porsche. Who pluralized that? That's all I want to know. Was li- it was li- listed as plural. I added the one. That's Got the it. Problem. Dodge Shadow, nice. and Isuzu Faster. It lists. It's listed as Faster. No okay, <laughs> maybe. Sure. I don't know. Sure. There's a VW Caddy. Oh, a Mazda. No. A team well, and, called and, and, Citroen oh. Racing is driving a '93 Eclipse. And Isuzu Faster is what they called the pickup truck. Oh. Like when, when oh. it wasn't the pickup, like every else in the where else in the world, I guess it's called the faster up till 2002. Um, so yeah, I like that's, there's also a VW Crepriolet, is what they wrote. So I don't, I just it's funny when people write these things, it's not just another Miata, you know. Uh-huh. Sure, uh, as it turns out, two of the Miatas are the Inglorious Bastards, 512 is running the full 24, and uh, Mr. Mental will be in a a, a a stint at least a single stint in that car so that means he if is it makes one, it if, if it, it makes, makes it, it it's true that's the hard part that car doesn't always have a history of making till the yeah. end so well uh, as it turns yeah. out there are two idiots attempting this uh it's a world's first driving well, two attempting, simultaneous- attempting what because we didn't talk about the first race well i'm, I'm seeing it right now we did okay it's on my list Two idiots are attempting <laughs> the world's first of driving in two simultaneous 24-hour events run by the same organization. So we actually reached out to one of them now. Hang on. Hello, sir. This is Jeff from Everyone Racers. Why are you such an idiot? Jeff, big fan. Uh, first time caller. Uh, long time live. Yeah, no, I'm just not. Everybody knows smart. it was you. It's not. It's not. It's, it's, <laughs> There's, there's no. Hey, well, there's... And, uh, the official press release went out today, uh, and Eric sent me a copy. And David Wallace from Grassroots Motorsports reached out to me and said, "I got a press release that said you're doing this. Are you insane?" By the way, we haven't seen you around the board. Where you been? So it was, yeah. It's me and Daniel Steinkamp. One, well, I'm probably mispronouncing that one. I think it was about right, Steinkamp. Uh, yeah. We have the link in the show notes. Go read it. Uh, nice article by Eric Rude. Yes. Including the point system because they're giving out an index of idiocy for the biggest idiot. Uh, yes. Bonus points for going through TSA in your racing suit and helmet. Because you have to die. Die. Just, yeah, from, I'm, I'm going to be time compressed anyway, so it's probably going to happen. I don't think they're going to let me take the helmet through TSA. They're probably going to want me to take that off. But uh. It's a face shield. It's a face shield. That's, That's right. your... It's the worst TSA in the United States. I'm not having that argument. I, I, we're going to go down this hole in a minute, or are we talking about it now? Are we talking about this now, <laughs> or are we going down? I imagine we're doing both. All right. So you're starting in Carolina, and so is the other guy. Yes. But you didn't get plane tickets from the nearest airport. Here's the deal, and everyone knows this. In the South, if you want to go to heaven or hell, you're changing planes in Atlanta. And I've already talked to Derek. He gets on an airplane in Charlotte. Guess where his connection flight is? Atlanta. Atlanta. Okay. And I, land, and I land 45 minutes before he does. Very nice. Are you going to wait for him? You guys going to share, no. share an Uber? No. No. I must get on the track. I must get there first. Well, all right. I I blocked the BMW for those 75 points. I'm a dead man, so I'm not doing that. I got to try and just get more laps in. Whew. Well, we're going to hear more about that in a couple of, next show or two shows? (laughs) Next show, right? 
Yeah, next so, show we should be able to do that. The Great. WRL is a result, by the way. We're moving on to results. WRL ran their Eastern Championship at VIR this past weekend. Looks like a nine-hour race on Saturday. First choice racing, 223 laps. I have no idea what kind of car it was. Second, Hammer Motorsports came in second. Third, Tons of Gas Motorsports. Uh, Tyler and Trevor from Kingston Racing ended up 35th overall. So uh, something must have something gone wrong Something went there. poorly there. Way wrong, probably, yeah. They probably went to the pits Saturday, when it was close. On Saturday, they lost uh, two rear tires and had to bring it in. Uh, then Sunday, I think, they actually started it in third. I don't know how they finished up on Sunday. Yeah, okay. let's let's just skip over this one. Couldn't find the right race results. Don't know what cars. Good job, yeah. guys. Just keep Yay. going. Yay. Yay. Uh, so that brings us like to... a beautiful weekend to be at VIR. Yeah, but now it's time for... Listener Feedback. Yep. People actually listen to the show and watch it on YouTube. Does it give us feedback? Here it comes. Great. Uh, uh, so I'll read this because Mental's driving. Uh, had a conversation with Falkenstein 944, 944 race team out of Florida. He corrected us on something. Said, currently listening to the uh, latest episode. For what it's worth, NASCAR does race in the rain and did so at Daytona about two weeks ago. <clears throat> uh, Mental mentioned that they did red flag for rain, but he reminded Mental is actually for lightning. So, hey, thanks for keeping us honest. It's as much as it's fun to make fun of NASCAR. I'm glad they run in the rain. That's good. Yeah. They don't run yeah. ovals in the rain. I think they, they, but the road courses they do. I think that's, well, that's the good package. And of course, I'm putting that, that, that one. That one wasn't that one oval. That wasn't the road course race. They raced at Daytona, and they did. I mean, obviously, it wasn't a downpour, but yeah, good on them. Because you know the drivers want to do it. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, ben Dawson on the Instagram sides with me when I say there is nothing finer than racing in the wet. I, I, did I say that? Really, I don't remember. Really <laughs> also, new really listener. Boring, what was that say? I said when it's really, really pouring, it oh, no, sucks it's, racing it in the rain. Especially when it's, when it's wet, like that. It's fun. It's also when it was icy and and raining, yeah, like yes. when you, yes. when you're snow like. Is... Oh yeah, snow. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> take <laughs> it back. So not racing in the wet all the time because that could yes. in, indicate snow. All right. I like racing in the wet. I hate sitting in the wet, and you can't do one and not the other. <laughs> yeah, true. All right, new listener, Jean Cardinale, a.k.a. Vino Y Corso, on Instagram, posted he was listening to the podcast now at work and enjoying it. Thank you oh, and wow. you're welcome. Good. Amazing. You're Someone enjoying it. it. That's great. Wow. All right, yeah. so our, our YouTube is growing. We've passed 100 subscribers. That means that some of you just stumbled upon us and must be listening to us there. And 85 seeing... of them are North Korean bots. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe. Um, okay. I did get a comment on one of them that says, I need boyfriend, but I don't know who she was. Yeah. Did mm -hmm. you delete it? Yeah, I did. Uh, okay, yeah. thanks. <laughs> Good. Just making sure. Okay, on our last episode, Andrew Pullman uh, commented on our Just the Tip. I'll take your advice and advocate uh, advocates for your HVAC safety. You were talking about cleaning out your screens in your dryer vent. Both uh, the international residential and mechanical codes dictate that only a backdraft damage. This is everyone home home ownership. Uh, everybody uh, okay. mechanical uh, codes dictate that only a backdraft damper should be used to protect those terminations and not screens. Screens clog and are way too easy to cause fires if they're not maintained. Also, put your sheet metal screws away when installing dryer ducts. Those things collect lint like crazy too. Use tape to join and seal. Good. All yeah. every, everyone home ownership. I, I have I say so that. many zip screws holding together all the screens on all of my dryer vents. I'd just like to mention that. Oh. See, I have to say that I definitely did it with tape when I put all the ducting together. And we do have a backdraft damper on it, but it also came with a screen and I just leave the screen to keep maintaining it. But I was also thinking to myself, do I really need this screen? Like it's got the flappy valve. That seems to work. It's on the roof. Like 
Oh, okay. Well, All right. Uh, everyone home ownership is done. Yeah. Um, also wanted to pimp our uh, latest YouTube video. It is me uh, doing a, a, a pretty lengthy in, uh, discussion about pit setups, how you can win. Um, I think if you watch it, you I'm sure will learn one thing or maybe come up with different things. And uh, next show, I didn't pull it because I just saw it, but uh, Michael Krenzler, thank you for your, um, your suggestions. He came up with some, a good comment and uh, added it to the comment. So you can go read his suggestion on the comments in the YouTube video. Go check it out. We'll link it right here. I can never point the right way. There it is. <laughs> It's right up there. Uh huh. And additionally, when Chrissy said she was just crewing for the race at CMP, Bill F. wisely said, never use the words just before crew, especially when you are the one doing the crew. And I'll add, especially at a 24, because crew is super critical at a 24. Oh, except I was like, mm, I'm just going to go to bed now. Make yeah. you some food, <laughs> have a beer. That's yeah. Okay. I'm just going to sit food is here. Totally, totally great. So excited. And, and, and we love you for it. So I'm, I'm with so Bill. Excited. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh racer rotor reaction we are still uh doing the sundoros with the 24 hours of lemons uh chris was in the commenting booth chrissy was in the comment booth mental was in the comment booth i was in the comment booth it was like a three pedal mafia fiesta well and eric which he's eric. Up here all the time so i mean yeah. like no i and feel Ryan. like yep. yeah yeah it's always, yeah. always a good time we definitely that had a was, good time. Yeah. Mad shout out to Randy Bish. I'm still trying to convince Matt that he needs to paint the solstice up in that livery, the, the, the wet-ass Pontiac. That was awesome. Nothing better Excellent. than a wet-ass Pontiac. So it was fun. <laughs> it was a fun race to watch. It was, it was fun. fun race to talk about. It was silly. There it are so many yes. creative people creative people in the because this is a lot of silly hats uh no pedal no right no pedal you win whatever i don't know what they call it um but the people the things people come up with are amazing like how do you even come up with things like a french horn and some do they actually talk about the shih tzu that they were like putting something and when it turns did, did the and, shih tzu happen i they were i don't know about it, but i don't think it's happening eric unfortunately forgot to add him because obviously the, the silly hats oh, races oh, oh, oh. are restricted so Eric was unable to add the Shih Tzu, and the Shih Tzu spent the race asleep in his bed. So the owner oh. sent us a picture of the Shih Tzu. So the, what it was, <laughs> let, let's give it to the people who weren't I, there a little yes. hint. It, the guy had wired up sensors on his Shih Tzu dog that if when the dog ran forward, the car, it was like acceleration. <laughs> no, no, it was going to be lift his head, I think. It, I think it was like oh, a so proximity sensor on the head. All right. So he, oh. he was going to have a treat, and he was going to like, lift it up and when his nose goes up the car would go faster and he would put it down so when the nose goes down either way it would slow down and yeah. then left and right i, I don't know it seems ingenious it I, seems like it's only important. about a minute that a dog will watch a treat if you don't feed it then as in the dog it starts to okay, say yeah, i'm gonna God jump for stare it. at you for an hour if you have his toy yeah <laughs> No, my dogs are like, I, I'm done with this. I'm jumping and taking it out of your hand. So there it is. Okay. Uh, Great. Uh, good anyway, good times. If you, you know, even if you're not interested in participating, just watch because it's, it's, it's entertaining. It's I mean, on the, the YouTubes. Is, it's there. It's fun. It's mostly just silliness, but everyone needs a little silliness in their life. All right. How about our own race? That was a little monday night and uh uh well, chrissy and i weren't there we were in the cape and we didn't have our uh our sim set up so we weren't there jeff are you there uh i was at work so i missed the first okay. race and Did then i got a text one? message that was like hey there's nobody on the race somebody should show up for the second race because there's like guests here but no actual e1r people i said oh yeah. okay, i'll show up so i, I showed yeah. up for the second race we we're on the roval uh randy was there randy bish uh, a few other uh, the normal names, uh, uh, Uncle Dave, Eric, the Porsche lover. So, yeah, we had a good time. Uh, we Excellent. did the Roval, the Charlotte Roval. We did it yep. in the 87s. And uh, there's some interesting discussion about how to make the 87s uh, more interesting uh, 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 endurance racers. Because right now, the tank is the same you know will last the same amount of laps because they restricted the fuel because they didn't want them running away but the yeah. tank will last the same amount of laps as the tires driven hard 
And Uncle Dave is suggesting that they increase the tank size so that way you must go gently or else you will lose the tires. Mm. Because he's in another series and he has the same exact thing where, you know, the guys who jackrabbit out after about seven or eight laps, all of a sudden you're passing them. Yeah. Because you you kept your tires on you. Yeah, that's good endurance racing. Call endurance racing, there. everybody. Yeah, right. Interesting. Great. Well, hey, join us on Monday nights. It's usually a good time. And usually we're there, you know, not like this last week. Yeah. It's a holiday. Yeah. It was hard. But yeah. Everybody was away. So, uh, you know who never runs too fast and burns out her tires? <laughs> so true. Chrissy's mom and Chrissy's dad. Chrissy's sister, Chrissy's brother in law. No, none of them burn their my tires out. My brother. It's a lot of people out there. Yeah. All of them. Your awesome. brother burns his tires. Oh, you're, you're your right. Brother burns his tires alive. He flat spots him. So yeah. he used to be the flat spot king on the on the team. He isn't anymore. No, but still, it's just one goat. <laughs> I'm just talking about his street tires that he always has to bring to your house to change he, out. He does burn through a lot of tires on that Lexus. Anyway, oh, well. topic time. So. One of the things that we always talk about during all of our endurance racing is multiple classes. You know, I just mentioned it with the 87s racing and iRacing. And uh, yeah, multiple classes on the track at the same kind of, at the same time. Not only does it bring up a speed differential, but it also brings up a definitely different style of driving and a style differential. So that's really what we're going to talk about today is the driving style that you might do in a slower car versus a faster car versus a mid-pack car versus an IOE car. And those of you who aren't lemons racers, we should mention that the IOE is the index of effluency. And that means you brought something so gosh darn terrible that it doesn't deserve to be on the racetrack at all. Uh, we can mention some of the things that have recently won an IOE, uh, a Sunbeam Rapier. Yep. Uh, <laughs> rapier than what? A, uh, a Jaguar know. Mark, a Jaguar Mark Four. Yeah, that's the kind of stuff we're talking about. Or like, Citroen you know, SM, Citroen Rolls Royce, Rolls Royce, Rolls Royce. Rolls Royce. a yeah. truck with Which, a boat on it. By the way, we we totally got a shout out for all three of those on the Thompson wrap up video. The boat, great. The Rolls, the Citroen. We'll get there. I haven't watched it yet. Just came out. Um, <clears throat> so I we. we were Right. Driving an IOE car is its own special treat and special set of skills. <laughs> also known as and, a rolling chicane. Yeah. You don't have, you know, some of them are not terrible rolling chicanes, but it's you know, when you have a car that really is absolutely no business being on the racetrack at all, like the Rolls Royce, for example, you have to you know, be able to drive it fast enough to not be dangerous, but also be so predictable that everyone can pass you because every single car is going to pass you. So how do you make it that they can pass you safely, cleanly, and efficiently every four laps for the entire weekend? Cause that's, what's going to happen. Uh, so re- essentially it's, it's be predictable. We let, we always have our cars for IOE stuff. This drive on one side of the track or the other, depending on which, where is in the track. Pick right pick left i usually like to be on the inside of the turns so when people are passing and they get a little aggressive they don't slide wide into me is it no one, no one really slides to the inside unless it's a porsche you know because that happens when they lift throttle but um just so pick pick your side run on the inside and just stay there um that way you know people always will know how to get around you we used to even put big letters in the back windows of our cars with an arrow and said please pass on left and even with that, we'd still get some jerk off trying to like shove it down the right when there was like two thirds of a car width and they'd shove their nose in there and, and push. You're like, I, I don't know how I can make it easier for you. Sorry. But uh, start there. Um, you also, in the IOE car, you, you need to go fast enough to not be dangerous. But, you know, if you go too fast, you're going to break the car because it's an IOE car. It's terrible. It's Samir. Samir, you're breaking the <laughs> you're car. You're breaking the car, Samir. <laughs> Yeah. So, if, Samir, if, Samir, please, for the look. But also, I, I would like to mention that if you show up at a race and there's a couple of interesting cars, the IOE is the interesting car that completes the most laps. Everything yep. else comes down to judges and organizers' choice. So you still have to turn laps. So I think essentially go as fast as you reasonably can 
especially once you're on one side. Like you can't, if you're not you know, taking full proper lines through the corners because you really can't because of the traffic and how slow you're going, you go as fast as you reasonably can on the one side of the track and, and there you go. That, that's a, about the right speed. Um, I'd also like to mention that, you know, the, the, the IOE, your goal is not to race around the track. Your goal is to stay out of trouble and keep rolling. Yeah. You need to roll all weekend long. And we've had yeah. it where we've had absolutely fantastic cars that spent four hours in the pit for some minor infraction that took us four hours to fix. Or came in every 20 minutes to get a new fuel filter. Or yes. Something like that. <laughs> yes, um, and? I, and, and they I, don't win. They don't win IOE. No matter yeah. how fantastic it is, if it doesn't roll around the track 90% of the time, you're probably not going to win IOA. Yep. Chris, you had your hand up? We'll I did. Ro that. Just real quick, I, I'm, I'm, I'm picturing all the time that we drove IOE cars, and it's really hard not to race, right? You're on a racetrack, and there's so many times where I'm just like, oh, just I can go around this corner a little bit faster. Oh, I can, I can break a little less. And then it breaks, and then. You're not I, I, I love you admitted that though. I, I feel so much better. It's like you can't turn it off. <laughs> uh uh. So I, you have to you have to just be you. Oh wait, you hold on, Mental's got his hands up. Oh, sorry, I thought that was what he had to say. Oh yeah, no. What I want to say also now when Chris, you know, Jeff saying stay out of trouble, that doesn't mean get out of the way. It is not your job to get out of the way. It is your job to be predictable. If you try to get out of the way, you're going to make it worse just be predictable do the same thing every time thank you for the whole weekend yeah um, now your car is probably a terrible piece of junk because that's why it's an ioe car so you're driving it as well as you possibly can as fast as you can while still making it keep it stay alive but if you're feeling like it's it's it might have a real big problem another advantage of staying to one side of the track is you can quickly and easily get off track if something goes terribly wrong with your engine so you don't oil the track down for everybody and you're also not unlikely to oil down the racing line if you're not on it. So if you stay off of it, there's a couple of nice advantages there. Um, and the best part of racing an IOE car is full course yellows because that's when you get to actually use the whole line. And you probably can set your fast lap time of the weekend on the full course yellows. I definitely think the Rolls Royce set fastest lap on the double yellow. Yeah, totally. The, the yeah, everybody's behind you going, oh my God, catch the pack. You don't have to go this slow. Yeah. yeah. We're doing the best we could. Yeah. But so an IOE car, it, it's not like racing the other cars. It's it's survival. It's predictability. Um, and that's that's about it for those. Uh, which I would is say, you know, sorry, Chris, I mean to cut you off. With, with the IOE game, you can't, you don't stumble into IOE. You can stumble into heroic fix. You can stumble into judges or organizer's choice. You have to decide from the get-go you are going for IOE. And it has gotten so competitive, you're probably not going to get it your first time. It's going to take you a couple shots. Takes takes three races in our experience most of the time. At least. But yeah. three with a lot of work in between. I, yep. I think the boat and Three having the, done it before. Yeah. I think the boat and the uh, Wartburg both got IOE in their first out. They did, but they were both unique. So, and anyway, and the war for grand the whole time. No, no, it didn't. It blew its head gaskets. Happened. I was going to say, I blew the head gaskets uh, out. But anyway, the, uh, the, the it's a big difference driving a Class C car versus an IOE car, even though they're probably both in Class C. So, to be competitive with C is different. And Jeff, you've got you've got some good stuff about this because yeah, we did this definitely. For years. I I loved le racing God's class. I loved racing C. And you are racing in a C-class car. You need to drive it like a race car. Uh, it's very different than most race cars, but you're driving it like a race car. You're in a race. You need to win C on laps. So, yes, you have to turn laps, and you have to run all weekend, and you have to do all that. But really, because your class C car, which is the slowest class in Lemons, uh, and we should mention some of the things that are typically in class C, uh, 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 if it's British, you know, it's probably going to be in class C. If it's a, if it's a really just totally like a Grover, the rustiest AMX ever, 
any any eighties Econo box that is unmodified, Geo Metros, Mazda three two threes, Toyota Tercel. Yeah, if you're running on Douglas yeah. Douglas extra tracks, and it looks like it just came out of the swamp, and it is a uh, Oldsmobile Omega with a crazy swap of like a 2.2 liter Chevy four cylinder. These things are class C cars. A Chevette with a normal motor. A you you know just think of just crappy slow stuff. So anyway, because you're crappy and slow, but you're actually racing, it's all about conserving your momentum. These cars, you absolutely drive like you are wheeling a spec Miata. You need to be driving hard, not braking, knowing what you're doing, knowing how fast you can take every corner, and most importantly, getting through those corners without having to slow down means managing the traffic around you. So you need to watch in your mirrors. You need to know who's behind you. You don't want someone passing you and making you slow down or hit your brakes or get off the gas or get off the line where you don't want to. So, you know, as you're going down the street and you know that you really want to pull a 50 mile an hour turn while everyone else is going to be pulling a 60 mile an hour turn, Getting those two cars behind you to pass you before the turn is the most important thing because then you can take the perfect line. So never get into a gunfight with a knife. Never get into a, a, a battle for a turn when you're in a class C. You need to do the turn on your, on your terms. So you point those people by, you take the turn as hard as you can, you get right back on that gas. So it's definitely survival of the fittest and driving a car smoothly is going to make it survive. So you don't want to be jumping on those brakes or jumping on that or turning harder or going offline or doing any of those fun things. You want to do everything precisely right. Mets, add your hand up first, then we'll go to Chris. And well, and like Jeff said, you're racing class C, you're racing. So it's not like the IOE car that Chris mentioned where you're staying offline. No, you're online as much as you can be. You are trying to maximize your momentum through those corners. You do not want to fall into a trap of racing in your mirror. Oh, I think oh, froze. And we lost mental on the highway. So and two people by. That's great. But don't be spend your entire time looking behind you when you need to be looking forward. Yeah, you definitely. Go ahead, it's, it's a good point. No, you absolutely need to make sure you're watching ahead of you too. Um, but your traffic management as a C-class car is so key. And it, people don't think about it that way. So you do end up in your mirrors a lot just because you need to see who's there and you need to get them by you when you want them by you. And now, Jeff, you were saying about like, getting them by ahead of, ahead of the corner. I like sometimes too to give them a point by coming into the corner knowing that on the way out, I want you over there. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I'm going to leave yeah, for yeah. you over there. So it it's it calms the A car down for a second. Says okay, they see me, and I'm going to get right by, and then they can set their corner up to get by on the side you want them to. So it's about communicating. It's about leaving space where you want there to be space for those people to get around you. So it it's I know that it's a very different kind of traffic management than there is in A, and I think that's where we're going with this this whole show actually it was going to be a subsequent show about how to do how to manage traffic in in a class cars but it's we had to learn that skill compared to where we knew our class c winning skill before because we've done so many of them uh, uh, in a, but it's, it's traffic management but it's the opposite side of traffic management yeah and really you're the traffic cop and you need to control the race around you and that guy who's bombing up behind you He's not in your league. You don't want to be racing him. You want to be making that car go around the track as fast as it can. And this is important. As uneventful as possible. You don't want to have to bend anything. You don't want to come in for black flags because all of those things will kill you in a C class, which is getting quicker and quicker and quicker. And it's all about laps and all about laps and all about laps. So a couple of black flags will take you right out. And it also, if you're pointing these people by in the right spots, like you can pull right behind them and get a little bit of a draft down the straight off some of these people. So you need Absolutely. that when you have a car with no power. You probably don't have the power to get around people, 
but sometimes you can follow somebody through a hole. And yeah. you can, uh, it's hard, but you could use picks too. So if you have car, other cars that Absolutely. are slower Those than you. Those IOE picks. Right, right. Chrissy? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, do Remember you want the, to explain that? The, the Saab. The Remember Saab, the, yeah. The old Saab, the black Before and white. got fast. Yeah. yeah. I think they've, they've yeah so that. you're not the slowest thing on the track. If you're trying for a C-class win, there are so, slower C cars. There are newbies and fast cars who don't know what they're doing. You need to get around these people. There's IOEs. So those people who don't have race craft will get stuck behind the slow things. And you can get around the slower things because you know that that limousine or Rolls Royce or whatever is staying on the inside. So again, are you looking far enough ahead on the track to see that that idiot who doesn't know how to drive is trying to pass that limousine? So I either want to box them in like right now so that I can take the turn right, or I want to wait back a little bit so that I can get my run up and get right past them all together on the straight or whatever, wherever my car can outperform them. So it's a lot of really knowing what's on track what your car can perform like and what other cars can perform like. Can I take okay. this turn harder than that guy? Can I accelerate harder than that guy? Mm -hmm. And maybe okay. you don't know, or maybe you have to wait till the next quarter. Okay. True. Ready to move on? Yeah. Yeah. Class B. Class. B. B class. And really when Chris and I were talking about this earlier, it's, this one's really tough. So uh, I want to make sure that we're all clear, especially if people are, uh, they just like to listen to us and don't really understand lemons uh, to make sure that we've, we've covered, right? A class is the fastest class. B class is mid pack. C class is, is usually the slower, slower, class. slower cars. And because I, I, every time uh, we talk about AER and other, the other series, they have one, three, five and letters and you know everybody does it differently and they all have the same idea so mid class uh, excuse me b class mid pack is t is difficult it's one of those they're not necessarily fast enough uh to be a class actual a class winners sometimes they're really close though and uh and they're not a crappy enough for for the uh for the c class car so it's it's the hardest we think to to win because you don't really know what your who your competitors are it all depends on classing so I feel like there's sometimes if we, when we've been looking at when we were in B when the Honda was in B and when we were looking around at the other cars around you say okay well, this car is beating us and we're like what car is that and like you just don't really know where you you fit because there's a lot of the different cars they're kind of like well you know you're at B that sounds good you can be in B and then trying to win in B is is difficult. So uh, they usually are top 10 finishers. So they're usually uh, I don't know sometimes they're somewhere between eight and ten if they're in second, then there's a lot of questioning of should they've been B? Whoa, who put them in B? There's hey, that, there's a B car. I think that happens just about every other race. Um, and I, I'm sure it gets old for the, the people that run the series because everybody's complaining that they shouldn't be, they shouldn't have been in B. No, why are they in B? Go ahead, Mental. Well, and one of the philosophies behind B is the car is fast enough to be in A class, but we're pretty sure it's going to blow up. And that only works until it doesn't blow up. Right. Yeah. First yeah. I'm pretty sure the team is going to blow up. Yeah. That's the other and that it's, and same, it's happened in C as well. So, I mean, it, it usually uh, happens in those other, uh, other um, classes that are, and then all of a sudden they do well. And you're like, that shouldn't have happened. Um, so to drive us, well, go ahead. Uh, that's what I was going to say. A lot of times when Christy's talking about, oh, who is that in second place? Who is that in second place? What she means is the race has been going on for three or four hours. We're not even close to the halfway point. And some B is crushing it. And, and let's be honest, what's, what's a B-class car? A Maxima, <laughs> you know, like, like a, a, some a, kind of four-door. A stockish, a stockish 944. Yeah, you know, not a, the a sing, Single cam Civic. Sure, not MX, the fastest. MX-5 or MX-6s and probes. Well, every now and then, something gets into B-class that what is exactly what Chrissy said. This car is fast, but it ain't going to last. Yeah. So Maddie. your supercharged V6 Maddie. Chevette. No, that's crazy. You know what I mean? Like, all of a sudden, they're out there, and they are a rocket. And you're yeah. like, who's that? Who's that? Who's yeah. that? Don't worry. It'll break. Yeah. 
Uh, all right, so to drive the B-class car, uh, you have to have your head on a swivel. You need to know all of the traffic that's around you, what's, uh, what are, what's everybody doing, and you can't just rely on looking in just your mirrors like you do with a, B -cl with a C class car, uh, and you can't, you're, you're trying to make yourself around those, uh, the IOEs, the C classes, and then you, but you're also not at the front of the pack that you know that you, your competitors are these other very fast A class cars, and, and you're, you don't have, probably have the power to be like the A class cars that will, you will just get around them. So it's really, um, it's a difficult, it's a difficult place to be. Uh, and it's, it's, you know, we did it and, and glad it's done. And, you know, all these have their own problems and all their, you know, difficulties. But I think, uh, for the most part, this one's, this one's tough because you're kind of hanging out in the middle. Yes. Let, let me say something about B class. To the, the driving difference between a B class and an A class is a lot less than the driving difference between a B and a C. You need to drive a B class winner like you're trying to win the race. And, you know, no, the, you're, there is no pausing and waiting or taking a moment to pick your spot. Yes, we all do that sometimes, even in the A class cars, when you got the fastest car on the track, you have to pick your spot. But you cannot wait for the right thing to happen in a B class. You need to press and press and press to win B because Chrissy said it, you're in the top 10 in a but car that shouldn't up, be in the top 10. You're looking up behind you a whole lot more in a B car than you are in an A car. Yeah. Like, come on, in, in the Civic, none of us are really looking in our no, mirrors. I look, I have mirrors? Don't right. have them. Didn't need them. It's, what, what does it behind you is a nothing point. Or just to make sure that you've actually made it behind, you've made it fully past them sometimes yeah, sure <laughs> depending on who's but, around so that's why i think b is a different skill set and that you're probably working your car you know, really hard to, to be that well um but you need to be watching both sides and all around you that's why we said head in a swivel it's not just the cars in front of you you're trying to pass there's going to be plenty of cars that are faster than you that you need to you know use this kind of c-class strategy with of how do i get them by me when i want them to get by me you know, so it's it's mixing and matching all the strategies to B and B. The combo strategy. That's a great idea. So here here's a, maybe a difference. Uh, if I'm driving in a, a, a C class car and I'm coming down a fast straight that has a tight turn, halfway through the straight, I'm surveying everything behind me. I'm picking my spot. I'm lifting if I have to. I am pointing by i am trying to get all the things worked out before i get to that turn because the last thing i want is to be dive bombed and take it off the line in a b-class car i need to figure out how deep i can break i need to start doing all of those things that you learn in a track day like taking advantage of things and making passes and doing all of those things in an a-class car you're you sometimes you're the guy dive bombing i'm sorry and that's what we're going to talk about. Yeah, we're going to talk. talk that's going to be a whole other show. Yeah. Yeah, because there's what? How do you do the level of aggression that is necessary to win an A without being a jerk, and it, things like that? So. And, and, and some may say that there, it's hard to do that. Yeah. That's Mental. next show. That's okay. Mental. All right. So there's, as we mentioned, there's two main ways you're going to end up in B. One. You're fast enough to be an A, but they don't think the car is going to hold together. The arrows, for example. Yeah. And another one is, yeah. Another one is you're a C-class car and you won by an outstanding amount. In True. either case, in B-class, your head, in addition to everything Jeff talked, you're driving when you're trying to win because you're trying to learn. You've also really got to have your head inside the cockpit because. In the case of a C-class car or should be an A-class car, you're taxing the machinery. You're finding those weak spots. And you need like oil down the track. You need to have those instrument cluster cross checks into you, not just on the main straightaway, for probably about three or four points on the track. And then also you're just listening. Is that a bearing going? Why is it inside tire locking up every time? What's going on What's here? What's that smell? Why is my temperature spot? Oh, no. What's it that smells smell? bad. That's a good one. Yeah. So you're, it's, we've said this before. I still say B class is hardest to win. Yep. Luckily, you only have to do it once.
Yeah. Unless you True. just have B, bring, bring B class cars, if that's what you do. Somebody's well, got to be in B. Yes. Okay. Our team, is, our, team is, -class. our team keeps winning. Like we, every car in our team pretty much is 1B. The Civic, the Cressida, Betty, everything's 1B. Mm -hmm. So, because that's just kind of the way you work your way up when you're, right. it doesn't seem quite as good. Or, and then, you well, know. and then you make, you put better motors in and then you yeah. turn up the boost a little bit and turn up the boost a little bit more. Yeah, you're, and you're say, chasing the dragon. Yeah. Uh -huh. You're like, oh, but we can go faster. Oh, I can stop anytime I want. I can stop right? anytime I want. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So, so the consistencies amongst all of these things is that you have to maximize your time on track. You, you have to be out there. You have to be turning laps, whether they're slow in an IOE car or they're uh, pretty fast or, or they're very fast uh, in the B class because they're, they come in the top 10. Um, you need to have fast, fast pit stops. They have to be, you know, like that's still just maximizing time on track, but you can't let up. Like Jeff was saying, you can't just give up say, well, you know, it wasn't quite fast enough or, you know, you, you need to be fast there too. Uh, and the biggest thing is just not also not step on your wiener. Uh, and that means yeah. don't, don't mess up. I feel like we might use that phrase and I'm not sure that everybody follows, you know, things like that happen. Um, don't mess up. Can't mess up. Can't have, can't lose a seatbelt. Can't get a, a puncture in a tire. Uh, all these things will make it so that your, your competitors are down while you're fueling. coming up pretty, pretty quick. Yep. All of the above. Yep. Really? It's uh each one takes its own special skill and we've had to learn that as we've done all of them really. Otherwise I would say, no, whatever. It's all racing. You just go race. It's different skill sets. So Absolutely. Is, it, is this find the next the skill section? Set that's somewhere. Is this next section me? I don't know what this says. I can't see the green. Yeah. I don't know what it's about though. Uh, I think it, it's what was there before I, when we didn't have a topic. Oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> we don't need that. Yeah, well, We'll Look, here's that. the deal. Let's 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 sum up. Everybody give yeah. a little sum up. Here's my sum up. Every car is going to take a different way to drive. And the faster you are to the pointy end of the field, you're doing more racing versus you're doing more conserving. And when we say the B class is the hardest, because you gotta do both. Yeah, pretty much. <clears throat> All right. It's a good wrap right. up. I like it. Cool. We'll talk about A class uh, because that takes its own skills. And like we said, sometimes we are not sure if we're yeah. the fast people or not the mean people, is what I'm trying to say. You know, yeah. and, and it's skills to learn in C and B. Jeff said he wanted everybody to sum up. I would say if you're going to do this and you're actually trying to race, don't get into that, oh, I either win everything or I, you know, I'm either first or last. Look at every opportunity on a track as an opportunity to improve your skills, not not just driving, but your pit stops, your ability to assess traffic, your ability to manage traffic, and your ability to understand what's going on with your car. Yeah, agreed. All right. All right. Anyone else want to sum it up before we move on to – has anybody got just a tip on the spot? I have it on the spot. That's on the spot from Jeff. All right, great. Perfect. So uh, it's we're back. We're out of coronation. We are now open at my uh, school. We are. I am driving to work I give it every two day. Weeks. Well, you, you're not wrong. Um, so so I am back to commuting. I mean, I've been commuting for a while, and we all know I've been commuting in the Corvette. And let me yeah, tell you, yeah, because it's got air conditioning. It's wonderful. It has air conditioning. You can take. And it doesn't smell home. like potatoes. It doesn't smell like potato soup. So I have an exhaust leak in the daily driver. How long do I continue to drive? Either a, the pickup truck which gets thirteen miles the gallon. Also, no air conditioning. Also, no air conditioning. What is a pleasant drive? Soon, I also soon you won't need it. The. That's true. That's future, that's future Jeff's problem. Future Jeff's problem. <laughs> I don't really need the air conditioning now, I'll be honest with you. The, the windows open is fine. The Corvette, with a potential of a scratch, but really, it's a it's a it's a 14-year-old Chevy when it comes down to it. It's not concourse level. It lives outside. The wife has given the permission for it to be a track car every now and then at a track day. Or do I fix the mighty Mazda? And start daily driving the Mazda 3 again. 
you, you're you're gonna need to fix the Mazda. And the last time that I want to be fixing an exhaust leak in my driveway is January. So, like, <laughs> you're, you're just muted. remember. Oh, now you're back. Okay. Mentals over under is about two weeks. I think yeah. we probably got six eight weeks in us. Oh yeah, easy, yeah, yeah. easy. But I, I, I think just plan for it sooner rather than later because knowing you suddenly it's going to be later and you're still <laughs> not going to have it fixed. Uh, oh. So I like like gather the parts, get it on the, on the radar of I'm going to do this soon. And then that means you'll be doing it the first week of December. Instead of the first week of January. Yes. And by the way, it's only a little exhaust leak, so I could technically drive with the exhaust leak. I'm sure where Chris is, is safety squirrel. No, I was going to ask about. I was going to ask for details on the near the rear the axle. Oh, you're fine then. It's blowing out, but still, like, just get it, get it, get it on the schedule. Get it done sooner rather than later. Like that's why I wanted. I'm trying to do like I'm, I'm on our calendar here. I have a work weekend planned the weekend after New Hampshire because we got to wrap everything up before it gets too cold. Like so, it's things like that. Just all right. We got one vote for fix the Mazda. Is it fix the Mazda and drive the Mazda? No, no. It was slow roll fix the Mazda. Yeah, fix the Mazda, and then <laughs> then you get choices. Choices are are, light, are wonderful in life. So, Chrissy, your thought? I am going with I'm going with fix it first of all because I love the Mazda and it's it's worth it and it's fun to drive. I mean, I don't know. You never know when you might need more cars. I mean, you have a lot of them, so you never know when you might need to drive two. So it's probably helpful to fix it just so you don't have to keep relying on one. Uh, and you, I don't know. I, yeah. Fix it. I would, I'm trying and, to think about it how is the long roof. Yeah. So right now we don't have the long roof in the rotation. Yeah. No. I, but then you could just, Oh wait, well, and then you, you have always the can get the pickup truck. So. Yeah. Uh, yes, I'd say fix it because there are times when that is the better car to use. And if you are counting out reasons of why you don't want to, then I'd say I'd say it's worth it. And I'm trying to figure out how to make it so that we can help you. I'm trying to figure out, like, can you bring it up here when you come up for a work weekend, but you have to bring the Z with you next time? So I'm just trying to figure out, like, how... I don't need any help. It's a hole in the, in the pipe. It, it, will get, of... it will get done if we help you. No, no, the, it's not just going to be a hole in the pipe. You're going to get that done. Something else is going to break. Something else is going to get cut Take off. Take the heat shield you're off gonna, when you do you're it. Gonna see, you're going to see eight more things that you go, because it's a 200,000 mile car. Like it's going to have those things, right? Once you get it, under there with a welder, you find stuff to weld. Yeah, like exactly. <laughs> you're you're going to find more problems. So I think you need to plan more than just, oh, this is like, Oh, it's three o'clock on a Saturday. I'm just going to bang this out. Mm -mm. No, no, that's going to be the start. There's going to be more. Yes. And don't take the, all the crap from the heat shield. So you don't have to do it when it's all falling off. Oh, the heat shields are I, already. Well, oh. cause I, I recently had to do that. So I am recently meaning like, I think it was the spring, but like not long ago. And then you, have st you stick your hand, arm under the, and you know, just take that off while you're it. Exhaust sucks. Exhaust work just sucks. I'm not a fan. All right, Mental, what's your Mental, what's your guess? So, also, the thing that everyone is missing about this, Jeff, is you love that Mazda. You, 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 you do treat it like a redheaded stepchild, but you enjoy it. You enjoy shifting your own gears. And sure, the Corvette's cool, but what's going to happen is you're going to ignore that exhaust leak, and they never get smaller, and then you're going to be running out of the house one day, the truck could be hooked up to the trailer and there's going to be four inches of snow on the ground. Ah, crap. And then you've got to drive to work with your windows down so you don't die because you could have just fixed the exhaust right away. Get it fixed, get it back in the rotation and enjoy it while you can because you like that Mazda. It's true. I really do miss because it is the only car with a clutch in the fleet. Get on, yeah. get on eBay and find somebody out west that's selling an exhaust system they pulled off their Mazda Speed 3. And then it oh, that sounds up. like way too much work. When I could just boogie <laughs> weld a freaking Budweiser can over the hole. 
Yeah, you're not no. you're not going for power. No, on this. Yeah, so. no. This is this is a no, no. I just say because it, it's because it's rust free and it'll bolt up rather than having to get under there, clean off all the rust, and then run oh. a bead. He still yeah. has to get under there and clean up yeah, all the rust. I gotta do that with the current one. Break off the bolts that are rusted on there now. And, and he's gonna do it in December when every time yeah. you bend knuckles because one of those bolts broke, it's gonna slam into something and it's gonna hurt. And then you're gonna have to drill out like four of the bolts and you're gonna get rust in your eyes. Oh, I'm glasses. definitely gonna get rust in my eyes. There's no way around yeah. that. Okay. Oh yeah. boy. All right, so what? What now? It's back around to you, Jeff. What do you think after you've heard this sage advice? Oh, I, I'm probably going to boogie weld it, but the the part where you said it's like three o'clock in the afternoon on a Saturday and I have no parts, that's probably exactly how it's going to happen. Uh -huh. To be honest with you. <laughs> and that's when Chris and Chris, you're going to get a text going, "Hey, could you bring this part, please?" Yeah. A part. It's just it's a tube. Cars. It's fine. Parts. We're just going to laugh at him because that's fair. <laughs> Right? There, there is nothing that I can't buy at the local flaps that is in the random exhaust section. <laughs> That's true. The, the extra just there. crinkly, the extra crinkly crimp bend. <laughs> like, exactly. <laughs> I know yeah, exactly the, about the, that. The one section. pipe that's like bendable. It's like it looks like an well, accordion. No, that, the that's one what we, we just bought. We got for the for the RV exhaust. For the RV. Oh yeah, that. that thing. Oh, I could use that one. I don't even need to go buy a part. <laughs> that's why I said. Right I said. I know now. exactly. We went through that whole department uh, or the whole. The whole uh, yeah. luckily, Give that to Jim, by the way. We need yeah. that for the for this weekend. Give that to Jim. The, oh, the okay. RV exhaust. We could do that. Yeah. Isn't it in the RV? No, Jeff took no, it. No, no, please. My father would lose that. Please. Yep. Yep. I uh, hold on. I got to get to the bottom of the notes because again, like you don't know what this 155 says. Uh, you still, know what? It says thanks it's for true. downloading us. We really hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Everyone Racers. We also hope you'll join us in the world of driving, racing, and building because everyone can be a racer, even you. If you enjoyed this podcast, subscribe. If you like the song or YouTube. Push the button and subscribe. It's totally free. Then go to iTunes, no matter where you watch us, and give us a five-star rating. Even if you hate us, give us five stars and tell us why. If you have any questions or show ideas, drop a comment on our Facebook page. Why did the music stop? Just keep going. Ugh. Just keep going. Just keep going, there man. Go. Even if you hate us, give us five stars and tell us why. If you have any questions or show ideas, drop a comment on our Facebook page. Everyone racers or email us at everyone.racers at gmail.com. Find us on Instagram or Twitter at everyone.racers. Thanks again, and until next week, keep the shiny side up. Unless, like us, there is no shiny side, then just keep those wheels down.